തോഫിക്ക് നൽകുമാറാവട്ടെ ഡിയർ ഷെയ്ഖ് സയ്യിദ് Alhamdulillah you welcome to India and we are very happy you are visiting here in Kerala and all uh, our institutions now we are humbly requesting your uh, yourself to explain your uh, boyhood childhood how it was were you born how you brought up in briefly please assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wassalamu ala sayyidil mursalin After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending our salutations to our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallama I will go in brief I was born on the 8th of December 1989 in Arusha a region in Tanzania uh, closer to to Kenya I was born in a hospital known as Mount Meru regional hospital Mount Meru hospital at night When I was born the doctors uh, according to the checkups they had to tell my parents that I am not alive I, w- I wasn't born alive because I did not show any sign of life I did not cry no display any sort of movement so the doctors thought and assumed that I was dead and therefore they suggested my father to go home and, and start the burial preparations my father went back home and came back to the hospital and then they took my body in other ways i should say they took me wrapped me around in a in a cloth on their way back home i sneezed and started crying it was surprising so they had to return back to the hospital and uh, inquire from the doctors as to what happened when the doctors checked me up it was uh, confirmed that i was alive And then after a few days I was baptized in the Pentecost Assemblies of God Church. It was a village church in Merirani village, Arusha region, Merirani village. Assembly Pentecost Assemblies of God and I was named Joseph. My father's name was Mr. John Edward and my mother's name was Rose Melita Kaya. She belonged to a very respected rank of Mr. Kaya. and then i will go in brief when i turned 3 years old 3 years old there are things that i'm skipping due to the time when i turned 3 years old it was heard from my mouth arabic like words now because my parents were not muslims they could not know if either this was quran or hadith so therefore according to their assumption anybody speaking arabic like words has evil spirits they had to start praying for me I'm in a Christian family with Christian parents but I'm reciting Arabic like words so it was as if I was possessed by the devils and evil spirits they had to start praying for me but whenever they used to t- to, to start the prayers I should cry out loud and disturb the prayers they even called our village pastor his name was uh, Reverend Johnson he came home and started praying for me whenever the prayer started I should cry out loud until the prayers get disturbed so my, my father got touched with with my crying because it it was a natural crying and he thought that the prayers should wait for a while and look for another alternative to solve this problem but my mother as a loyal christian she insisted for the prayers to carry on until the evil spirits get casted out of me then there was a little clash between my father and my mother to an extent that my mother got so disappointed that she uttered some words that were dangerous to my life and well-being then seeing this my father decided to snatch me away from arusha taking me to dar es salaam to my cousin sister maryam maryam saidi melita kaya while you was uh, around 3 years while i was around 3 years old maryam was a muslim how was she a muslim she was a muslim because her father mr saidi melita kaya in converted to Islam his name was Jeremiah Melita Kaya okay. but he was working as a station master in a railway corporation he wanted to get married to a muslim woman he converted to Islam and therefore Maryam was born in a muslim family so my father handed me over to a muslim 
because they as christian they could no longer so you stay brought up me. in darussalam and then i grew so up in when darussalam. you started to islamic daman where was your first lecture to the public audience as i was staying with my sister she 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 heard the quran and the hadith because she's a muslim she knew what is this i could differentiate between halal and haram she was surprised so she took me to to a nearby masjid a local masjid mm. and informed the imam of the masjid the imam of the masjid was also surprised with all these facts and then they sat down maryam my uh, my brother in law her husband and the imam of the masjid because at that time I was from 3 to 4 years old they thought it is dangerous for me to go around on my own my brother in law was working a local businessman had to work 24/7 to put bread on the table maryam is a woman so they had to look for somebody to look after me okay yeah then my first masjid when i turned 5 years old my first masjid was in temeke district in dar es salaam known as masjid tungi where you delivered the first I lecture i delivered a lecture okay so what about your parents now they are uh, still uh, any with you yeah they are in arusha now my parents now they they moved from to arusha islam. to dar es salaam after converting to islam they converted to islam in 1999 to 1998 both of them alhamdulillah converted to islam and they moved from arusha and after 10 now years then yeah. you was uh, around 10 yeah and now what are the activities you are in the dawa field doing currently i registered an organization a trust fund this year and i have the registration certificate with me here as known as said john dawa trust fund why i registered this organization because ever since we started doing dawat we were doing it the normal local rural way going from one village to another that time we had no knowledge of cyber space and cyber networking mm. we just used to go face to face now when i came back from south africa i had seen the importance of registering an organization that will work in the dawa project globally and internationally Inshallah. as efficient as possible so that this dawa and the message of islam can reach to everybody in all the parts of the Inshallah. world up to now how many countries you visited in regarding this dawa activities and how may, approximately how much uh, how many lectures you delivered any gatherings uh, and uh, how many muslims uh, they how many people they reverted to islam through you lectures are unaccountable lectures were un- because we used to go from one village to another and in each village we used to stay at least 3 days mm-hmm. so lectures are unaccountable countries i visit tanzania almost all of it dodoma morogoro almost all of tanzania besides some few regions malawi the entire country of malawi all the villages besides one district known as inkatabe we did not have the chance to go there mozambique the entire country of mozambique from A to Z all the 10 regions of Mozambique Kenya few districts in Kenya Uganda few districts in Uganda and as well as South Africa town for a short while so what is your opinion regarding the Kerala after you are landing in India how the activities in our region what you are feeling honestly speaking before i visited india whenever i used to hear the word india i i always used to think of hindus that's what we know there in africa but as soon as i landed in kerala i saw the vibe of islam in kerala the progress of islam in in kerala how ulamas are running uh, islamic activities alhamdulillah mashallah is more than what i have ever imagined because we don't have these kinds of institutes in in our in, in our countries mashallah. so this is mashallah is is supernatural and uh, whatever uh, what is your opinion regarding sheikh abu bakr and uh, how you are feeling about his uh, leadership here in indian muslims For my them. opinion regarding our uh, fadilah to sheikh abu bakr as far as i know for what he is doing and I'm, i re- i repeat again i'm not speaking this because i came under him no i'm speaking this because of what he has done and what he is doing honestly yeah. speaking from the bottom of my heart what he has done is supernatural masha masha allah is for the progress of islam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him in this dunya and in the hereafter he okay. what he is doing is supernatural and allah give him long life allah Ameen. give him more Ameen. strength Ameen. to continue doing what he is doing Ameen. of course i know there will be people who will be against him 
I understand that there are people who are against me too. <laughs> there are people who were against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam too. So there will, wherever there is positive, there has to be negative. Mm -hmm. There will be people who will be against him, but it does not matter. For so long as what he is doing is right, he is doing for the sake of Allah, he is propagating Islam, may Allah give him more amin, strength and amin, more, amin, more ithbad. So what is your message from Tanzania and from African Muslims to the Indian Muslims? My message from African Muslims to the Indian Muslims, briefly, is that we are humbly requesting for a joint venture. We are humbly requesting for a joint venture. We also love, I feel jealous of the progress of Muslims of Kerala. <laughs> I also love to have institutions like this in my country because Inshallah. there in Tanzania, Inshallah. only missionaries and Christians run these kind of institutions. Muslims there are weak. Muslims are, 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 are du'afa. We don't have any progress when it comes to Islam educationally and financially. In Bezi, that is the Jamia Nuriya Islam ah. is education complex with no, the help no. of Indian community. Yes. You know, a lot of Saudi and Saqafi and some ulamas came already from India and they are working in your country. No, no. So inshallah, whatever it is, the cooperation, we are also happy to do the Islamic activities Inshallah. and their work with the, their cooperation.